Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this extraordinary session of the EuroConsult World Satellite Business Week 2020. My name is Lauren Whitfield. I'm Chief Events and Marketing Officer at EuroConsult, and I will be your host during the following three days of the event. I'm sure that many of you remember that line from Monty Python, and now for something completely different. Well, this year's crisis has certainly provoked some profound changes in our lives, economies, the way we work, and in this context, satellite-based services have and are contributing innovative technology during the pandemic. EuroConsult World Satellite Business Week has been taking place every single year since 1997. Each year, we bring together top leaders of the satellite sector, including CEOs of major satellite operators, service providers and analytics companies, manufacturers, launch providers, as well as policymakers and government and private sector users. Traditionally, we would meet in Paris at the Westin for a week of engaged discussions, an agenda fully packed with meetings, networking sessions and events. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, for the first time in years, we couldn't meet in Paris, and we decided to move the entire event online to keep the community engaged. Our team has worked hard over the past weeks and months to make the best of the current situation and create a virtual experience that would be engaging and insightful. The event will follow a revamped template to the one you are used to from the traditional format, the three-day program will take place over two stages, with sessions on different topics running in parallel. Today and tomorrow, Stage 1 will host a Summit for Satellite Financing, featuring top panel discussions with leading investors, satellite operators, launch services companies and manufacturers. In parallel on Stage 2 today, you can tune into the Enterprise Connectivity and Smart Plane sessions. Tomorrow, on Earth Observation Business, we'll start on stage two and continue on Wednesday across both stages. During the event, you can of course use the event platform for networking, which you would have visited before joining this session. Conference sessions are being recorded and will be made available just in a couple of days. During our panel discussions, you'll be able to send your questions to our speakers via the Q&A feature on the event platform, and we will address those at the end of each session. Before I hand over to Paco Réveillon, Euroconsult CEO, I would like to extend a big thank you to our partners and sponsors for their continued support during this special edition. These include, among others, our Anchor official partners, SES, Airbus, Maxar, Ariane Space, Boeing and Milbank. Thank you to our many sponsors. There are too many to name them individually, but your support is really key to maintaining this event. To kick off the program today, Pacom will discuss the major events and development of the past year and perspective going forward. Pacom, the floor is yours. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my uh, pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, I would first like to thank uh, Lorraine for a kind introduction before moving to this first presentation, uh, opening presentation of day one of the conference. So as entitled this year, uh, I think I decided to opt for welcome to the new SATCOM world. It aims at reflecting some of the clear changes in the dynamics of the industry and considering the fact that 2020 could well happen to be a pivotal year for the entire ecosystem. So uh, just maybe about Euroconsult and who we are, most of you may be familiar with us, I hope, but otherwise uh, just saying that we are uh, an international leading firm in providing research and advisory services to the entire space industry and ecosystem of stakeholders. Uh, among our research uh, consulting, which is our largest part of our activity, certainly executive events, but also training, we aim at having a comprehensive offer in order to support decision making and the activity of all of our clients around the world. 
which I just mentioned, as you would see on the chart, that we are just introducing some new services to uh, to the market, which, for example, the new digital platforms that we have started to release earlier during the summer, and which will offer a complete new experience in the access to our research. Another one is training, where we have, together with partners, completely reshaped a catalog of, of training, would it be for uh, strategic, economic, but also technical skills uh, that we want to offer to all of the uh, players around the world. Uh, here you would find just a few figures giving you an idea of what we've been doing in the last few months, so some KPIs giving information on the background of Euroconsult activities. But uh, without further ado, I think uh, that I jump to the core topic of this presentation. So. The first item to highlight is the diversity and number of events that we have seen in this year uh, at corporate level but market level that makes it uh, very unique and certainly all of that taking into account COVID-19 in, in the background. So again this year in this industry that keeps transforming, we've seen a combination of events on the financing side, innovation and offerings, and in terms of business models and dynamics that all together contribute to transforming certain of the stakeholders, but even more transforming the entire industry. So what is the situation today for satellite connectivity? If we just have a first look at data usage, and these figures are from last year, but as you could see, there is certainly no shortage in the appetite for bandwidth around the world. In 2019, we saw another increase in the volume of capacity list from clients around the world to a record level of 1.4 terabit per second. And while admittedly we could see a form of slowdown this year, we still anticipate continuous growth in that capacity volume. Uh, important to mention, relatively speaking, video applications represent a progressively smaller part of the traffic, but it certainly remains very key in terms of its contribution to the revenues and profits of satellite operators around the world. Another key trend or milestone for the global usage of satellite capacity, the use of high throughput satellite system, broadband optimized system, so to say, represent now about two thirds of the total traffic leased and carried over satellite systems. So, I've talked already about COVID-19 briefly, but what has been its impact on, on the industry and demand this year? So in practice, you could see one first exception and which somehow shall resonate through various services, which is broadband access. Have anything professional, personal use of online services are just ramped up this year, which certainly will trigger an acceleration of all digitization process across the industries and for the various clients and users of satellite-based solutions. So you could find that as, as kind of a positive impact for the industry for its uh, medium and even long term. But at the same time, if we look at the highest impact that you could see on the chart was for mobility, uh, I, uh, the high road traffic and its dramatic reduction or even the stopping of activities in maritime, for example, for the cruise industry, clearly have a major impact of a number of service companies, but also on the entire ecosystem behind them. Would it be antenna suppliers, other equipment vendors, or satellite operators? For certain other services, I would say the impact may not be as much a revenue reduction as a slowdown in some of the installation and decision making. So as such, it shall still wait on the gross prospect that the industry could have had for 2020 and it will partly move to the right some of that growth expectation. If we think of this impact, but also the questioning for satellite company, uh, without getting every single number, what this chart would say is on the one side, the still research for a new growth for satellite operators and historical leaders in that uh, part of the industry, certainly revisiting models, trying to go to the next generation of services, promote new forms of business cases and, and offers to the market. 
and at the same time, some players who have been more already vertically integrated or in different positions, where you could see uh, a form of resilience that remains very true for the entire satellite connectivity, as opposed to certain other industries. But at the same time, so those players may be looking at important investments or guaranteeing the level of uh, the value creation and uh, profitability that they can generate. So all in all, all the players would be looking at optimizing their models and to engage into a new uh, kind of virtual growth cycle. So how does that impact and result in changes in the ecosystem itself? As you could see here, this year has included a number of chapter 11 and reorganization process. Uh, obviously, most of them have been heavily publicized. Uh, would it be from a OneWeb, Intersat, Global Ego, Speedcast, Phaser? What's certainly not, not worth is the fact that such processes have touched players in all parts of the ecosystem, more or less. Uh, it's also important to note that a number of those processes are getting closer to completion, and we could expect that several of the companies will be in a position to exit Chapter 11 before the end of the year. In the meantime, we've seen this year an acceleration in uh, deals or strategic agreements with certain parties, and it goes from acquisition process of Intelsat aiming at acquiring GoGo's commercial airline business or Utelsat acquiring the distribution, the European distribution of uh, Big Blue for broadband access, or from SCS and Starlink that have recently announced a partnership, strategic partnership with Microsoft and its uh, Azure and Azure Orbital new services. Uh, why are all those changes and also agreements? Well, certainly it comes together with the shifts that we'll continue to see in the capacity uh, available in the industry from different satellite infrastructure, but also together with ground systems. So when you think of the situation in just two to three years from today, we'll enter in an even more multi-layered environment where you will see the next generation of satellite assets combining new generation geostationary satellite systems, much more uh, flexible, as well as very high throughput systems, but certainly also with at least certain of the NGSO constellations that could enter into uh, their operational phase. So it will be a higher diversity in terms of the capacity offering, new flexibility features, with that benefiting to the clients, but also transforming the business models of the companies owning the systems themselves. So if we think of the GeoComSat orders, we are remain in a situation where traditional orders or looking at growth and expansion remain on the low side. And if you take aside the satellites procured as part of the C-band reallocation process in the US, you would still find that we had uh, quite a low that had not met be since uh, the early 2000s. So fortunately for the industry and thanks also to uh, uh, about two years effort, the reallocation process has resulted in a surge of satellite orders, will certainly uh, benefit to the backlog of both manufacturers and launch companies when thinking of geostationary assets. So those satellites, together with the rollout of the NGSO constellations, could still see altogether a clear uh, multifold change in the level of supply offered by the industry. So if you were to look at different regions, you're talking about at least four or five times increase in the volume of capacities that should see, be available in the coming years. And these volumes certainly come together with a continuous improvement in the efficiency. This will translate into better pricing for a number of clients and obviously a certain level of competitive pressure but it's also that kind of lower ARPU and pricing levels that are, will be key to enable the uh, take up of new services and uh, ultimately uh, the new growth cycle for the industry as we see it. So when thinking of the growth markets, uh, I would say outside of uh, the broadcast sector where we expect a form of continuous erosion still mentioning that this industry would represent 
a market of at least 4 billion in 10 years from today and one of the most profitable segments. Uh, we see growth in essentially all of the data related segments in the industry. So one could argue about the dynamics of a particular segment against another. Clearly the pillars that we expect to see in terms of access, mobility following the current uh, crisis time would represent again a growth market, we believe in, in a couple of years from now. Uh, the enterprise uh, for both private and civil government networks and defense as all uh, growth markets and where the new capabilities could support uh, new uh, capabilities for the end users and with a big focus on, on cloud-based uh, solutions and automation. So when looking at our forecast, we had already presented this, but clearly we see a, a surge in the volume of leased capacity. This together with optimization in uh, pricing of capacity and services should result in an increase in the capacity market value and a new growth phase but that will still be, uh, let's say, relatively more modest, still bringing the industry likely around uh, 19 to 20 billion at the end of uh, this decade. So in practice, this uh, profile would come very much, uh, you know, very much closer to what we observed in the terrestrial telecom market. So also to give a view on how this compares to our previous forecast and what has been on what is the impact that we anticipate from the COVID-19 outbreak. Overall, we believe that this crisis and its impact on several segments, would it be delays in the development of certain programs or on the client side, should result in essentially a postponement by a couple of years of the new growth phase, as you could see here. And why we believe that the industry will be able to initiate its new growth path. We don't necessarily expect that this can be fully compensated in the, in the next few years. So whereby, as I mentioned, we should get closer to that $19 billion target. In terms of conditions for future growth, we can mention at least uh, six of them that we see as, as obvious points and strategic issues. So the success of the next generation programs and assets including not only, but in particular, NG and so constellations will be key, uh, we believe, for the entire ecosystem and in terms of transition. Uh, the last mile, the terminals, will represent a critical point in the next two years to initiate uh, the new growth that we would expect. Um, universal service access. What is universal access? How much bandwidth and its spread around the world will be another key uh, consideration, especially for global systems. Uh, network integration, uh, obviously uh, higher transition to cloud operations, but also a more and more seamless integration with terrestrial networks will uh, represent a requirement. The lower cost base is a continuous effort for optimization, but very much as for terrestrial networks, it's a condition to enable the new uses that customers will be expecting. And at the end of the day, this will trigger, continue to require new forms of partnership, new forms of sales models that will have to be more flexible as well, uh, more creative on a year-to-year -year basis. And that will be contri contribute to reshape the market year after year before potentially we reach a new form of stability still uh, several years uh, from today. And uh, with no further ado, I would like to thank you very much and I wish you a very great uh, Virtual World Satellite Business Week. Thank you very much.